In this video, I'm going to take a closer look at the Victron Multiplus 2, an inverter charger that's got a reputation for being one of the best. It's more than just an inverter. It's a low frequency inverter, a battery charger and a grounding relay all in one device. So is it worth your investment? Let's take a look. This is what I'll talk about. And at the end of the video, I'll talk about some features of this inverter as well. First up, let's look at the efficiency. The manual says it's 69% efficient. So let's test this. First, I'll measure the DC input from the battery. And then I'll measure the AC output and divide them with each other. Fifty four point twenty volts and the current thirty five point eight amps. And let's now measure the AC output seventy four point eight amps. And the voltage 230 volts as expected we get an efficiency of 92 percent that's a bit less than the stated efficiency of 96 percent in the manual but 92 percent is still well above the average now let's do a max low test we will test with a space heater a heat gun and a kettle, which is here. This will add up to, uh, I think, about 5000 watts. So let's see what this can do. Also, my battery, the BMS is limited to 100 amps. So the maximum we can draw is about 5200 watts. Let's see what happens. We're up to 3,600 watts. Five thousand five hundred watts. It just showed overload, but it's still working. Now the uh, I think the BMS shut down because it's over 100 amps. So we can't actually do a full uh, test because the power surge of this inverter is 9000 watts. So we cannot go there with just one battery. Victron products show their power in volt amperes or VA rather than watts. VA accounts for both voltage and current, while watts reflect actual power use. If your appliances have a power factor of 0.8, then a 5000 VA inverter is roughly equivalent to 4000 watts. This multiplus can handle peaks of 9000 watts because of its low frequency inverter inside. One of the things I like about the multiplus is its low standby power consumption. The manual says it consumes 18 watts in standby mode. So let's disconnect the loads and measure it. And I have 0 0.32 amps. And let's now measure the voltage of the battery. 53.16. And we have a standby power consumption of 17 watts. So that's within the specs. There are two modes for energy saving, AES and surge mode. AES stands for economic energy switch that reduces the switching frequency of the MOSFETs inside of the inverter. This will save some energy, but will turn the sine wave into a narrow sine wave. When a load is detected, the inverter switches back to a normal sine wave. This will use 12 watts of standby power instead of 18 watts. Not much difference. 
So in my opinion, it's not really worth it. The second option is search mode, where it will consume only two watts. The output switches on every two seconds to detect a load. If the load is larger than 100 watts, the inverter will turn on. If the power is under 40 watts, the inverter will shut down, back into search mode. So this mode is not ideal if you have small loads like a clock that requires a few watts to work. The battery comes in here, straight into the MOSFETs. The MOSFETs make a sine wave of the battery. So we will have a 48 volt sine wave and then the transformer uh, increases the voltage to 230 volts. And we have just a single fan right here. Let's take a look at the connections. This is the main battery input. AC out 1. This output powers your essential appliances, whether the grid is up or down. This input stays on. AC out 2 or non-critical loads. It only works when you have AC power coming in from the grid or a generator on AC in. AC input. This is where the grid or generator plugs in. I recommend using the inverter charger generator because it supplies a clean sine wave. That's better for your appliances. In an ESS system, the electricity will flow both ways on this cable. VE bus. This connection is for programming the system. And then we have the inverter charger switch. You can turn it on when the switch is in position 1. And position 2 is for charging only. As with life in general, the good things come from within. In this case, it's a software. Here are the key features that make the Multiplus stand out. Power control helps to avoid overloading your generator or the grid. You set a maximum input current and the Multiplus will ensure your system stays within that limit. If you have extra input power, it diverts it to charging the batteries. Power Assist is a boost for those times when you have high power demands but not enough grid or generator power. It pulls extra power from your batteries to handle those peak loads. Then switches back to charging your batteries when demand drops. This is handy for things like running heavy appliances, like an AC, without needing a larger generator. If the grid goes down, the Multiplus 2 keeps the lights on. It can quickly switch to your battery power, keeping your essential appliances running without interruption. With less than a 20 millisecond switch over from the grid to battery power, you or your computer won't notice. You can use the Multiplus 2 in single phase, split phase or even three phase setups with parallel units. Plus, with Victron's app and VRAM portal, you can monitor your system remotely over the internet. Though, you will need a GX device, which adds about $200. If you decide to use an assistant like ESS or Energy Storage System, you can transform your home into an efficient energy storage system. With ESS, you not only have battery backup for when the grid goes down, but you also have the option to send excess solar energy back to the grid if your batteries are fully charged. The great thing about ESS is that it's flexible. There are various ways to configure it depending on your energy needs and goals. If you are interested in a deep dive into ESS, I could make a whole video about it. Just let me know in the comments if that's something you would like to see. While the Multiplus has a lot going for it, there are a couple of downsides to consider. The first one is an additional programming hardware. To program the Multiplus 2, you'll need an MK3 to USB dongle, which will cost you around $70. So there's a bit of extra investment required just to set things up. You can also use the default settings as well, but you are limited in your options. The second downside 
is complex programming. Setting up and programming the MultiPlus 2 can be a bit challenging, especially if you're new to this type of system. The good news is that there are plenty of documents and guides available that you can walk through the process. If you're willing to dive into the details, you should be able to get everything configured just right. I have two diagrams using the Victron MultiPlus on my website. One is 24 volts and the other is 48 volts. I will link the diagrams in the description. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.